As the sun rises on June 20th, 1942, news of the Japanese reinvasion of Guadalcanal spreads throughout the merchant fleet, heading towards the front lines. The mood of the troops aboard these ships goes quickly from a relaxed anxiety to nervous anticipation as they clean, inspect, and re-inspect weapons they didn't think they'd be using so soon. Meanwhile, on the front lines, the nerves of the sailors aboard the ships of Battle Group 1 are frayed. After enduring repeated air attacks by the Japanese forces, the lack of downtime is starting to take its toll on the crews of these ships. as well as on the pilots flying the Wildcats charged with combat air patrol over both Battle Group 1 and the Wasp's Nest. Every time they return to the carrier to rearm, refuel, and patch up their battered planes as best they can, they notice fewer and fewer pilots returning with them. With their numbers dwindling, Wildcat pilots are being split into two groups, one of which covers Battle Group 1, the other the lightly escorted USS Wasp, their home, and the only place in the area they have to land. Wildcat pilots aren't the only one fighting stress and fatigue. Pilots and their gunners of the WASP's detachment of Dauntless Dive Bombers searched frantically for the supply convoy that they were just too late to stop. Changing the nature of their mission from preventing an invasion to attacking the one heavy combat vessel in the Japanese group. Pilots alternate between searching the seas below and their dashboard, particularly their fuel gauges, as they drop lower and lower. So far, their search for the Japanese surface fleet has been disappointing, to say the least. With extensive damage and a depleted air wing, USS Wasp receives a transmission from Midway that lifts the spirits of everybody on board. Help is on the way. Our Dauntlesses have found them. I've set most of the groups to groups of three. I'm going to bomb from altitude manually. I've got two groups of two that are going to go in and attack as they're intended, as dive bombers. Uh, I am going to show this attack. Um, I don't usually do this because it can be really tedious to watch. Uh, but I had a comment about uh, level bombing being... Um, more accurate than uh, dive bombing and that is kind of strange um, you would think it would be otherwise but with how crappy the uh, ma the AI was bombing ships in the Abdicom campaign I have taken to manual bombing from altitude I don't usually show it because it's uh, can be kind of tedious but I think for this one, I'm going to uh, show our attacks on the heavy cruiser here. So 
We've got four planes that are coming in on the heavy cruiser to drop their bombs in dive bomb fashion. And we've got a bunch of others that I'm going to do on my own. So uh, if you haven't seen how manual bombing is done, uh, you'll have uh, plenty after that. So if you're looking to learn how to manual bomb, uh, this is going to be the opportunity of a lifetime for you. If you're not looking to learn how to manual bomb and just want to uh, watch and are bored by this, I do apologize, but I wanted to show this. Um, also, the cutscenes that I make of bombing runs like this um, honestly can be kind of a pain in the ass to put together. So I I think for this one, I'm just going to do it myself. But we can see what kind of damages we can cause to the uh, heavy cruiser there. I went with the heavy cruiser uh, because there's no need to hit the transport ships now. They've already dropped off their uh, charges. So um, we will bomb them. And if we can get that heavy cruiser down, maybe we can go after, oops, this is the one that I'm bombing with. Maybe we can go after some of the, uh, the destroyers. All right, so what I do when I manual bomb is I get them lined up as best I can. I look at the speed that the ship's going. Uh, I try and do this from a uh, lengthwise uh, run. Uh, sometimes that doesn't always work out uh, because of how they maneuver. Uh, she's increasing her speed now, uh, going to 14 knots. She's got moderate and heavy damage. Um, I may actually send someone after number two uh, just to finish her off. I don't get a lot of command points for the um, the ship's the uh, cargo ships, but all right. So I've I've got it lined up to where we're gonna come uh, roughly on bow of the cruiser, but they are turning to the uh, starboard side. So we're gonna have to compensate for that. Going 14 knots. Um, I'm gonna drop just slightly past and to the left uh, number seven key is there we go number seven key is the uh, attack function on these uh, bombing runs so there's the first set of bombs dropped now watching me miss with every single one of them but she did there we go missed with uh, most of them all right, so this group is already attacked. Uh, I kind of like to keep them separate, just because it can be kind of a pain to uh, go through and tell who is who is dropped and who is not. Uh, so usually after I drop, I send these guys off. Uh, I do keep some around to monitor damages, um, but for the most part they go off and if I see them uh, way off in the distance then I know that they've already dropped. Now number four is uh, pretty far out so we could start them heading back. Uh, number one if you notice I've got them up to full speed. Uh, take a look at the bullseye there, the uh, aiming reticule. If I drop their speed down to nothing it gets closer. So it'll continue to get a little bit closer see it go as we get closer to uh, what our actual speed is. Now she's down to nine knots. Uh, still, looks like she's still turning to the left and we may have a Bob Ross happy little accident here where we could probably 
hit both ships, but it looks like they're going to dodge here. All right, so group number two is still turning to the starboard side, so I'm going to... Oops. Uh, pause. Try not to pause too much. I know it kills the uh, immersiveness of all this, but in time it can't be helped. All right, so right about there for this group. And we'll get them up to full speed, send them off. Watch our handiwork as the next group moves in. Next group's going to be four, five, and six. Seem to be hitting in the same spot each time. Uh, heavy. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> heavy and heavy. Oh, didn't target yet. All right. Got to get these guys slowed way down. Starting to get fires developing on the bow. Still going nine knots. Like she's uh, straightened out a bit. There you see it jumping way to the, the back there. So I'm going to... Nope, now she's turning starboard again. I'm going to drop ahead of the uh, bullseye this time. This thing right here. Hopefully we can get a little more on the bow shot. Drop right there. Because there are three planes, so they do have to uh, get their... Everybody... Everybody's bombs on target. That's what I'm trying to say there. So far, we've only lost one Dauntless. That's from uh, our dive bombing groups. Oh, we missed. Maybe, eh. Two duds. Started more fires with the duds. Heavy and moderate. This isn't going very good. Uh, next group will go grab number seven. Actually, bring them down like this. And uh, number 10, and down like this. And then number 16, I'll bring you over like this. Actually, change that a little bit. Bring you in like that. That would be kind of interesting, huh? We do have another group here. It's uh, 13. Did they drop yet? They might have. Yeah, they did. So we've thrown their entire formation into complete funk. They're going to end up doing some of the work for us. There's... Two ships collided. All right, they don't need to be that far out. Also going that slow. We'll turn them in. Uh, seven... They're moving in. I don't know. Should I do it? We've got three, three groups. Yeah, why not? All right, they're not moving at all. All right, get your speed down. They're coming in on a pretty good position to hit these two uh, transports, both at once. Unless they break free, and then that may cause some problems. Hopefully we can get there in time. Like, we may be able to get there just in time. Uh, pause here. This group's got a circle. 
because they got a little too close for me. Seven, eight, and nine. Make these guys. We're going five knots. So even if we're a little bit off with our targeting, uh, we could possibly <laughs> we'd possibly take out both of these transports at once. A couple of well timed, well placed shots. All right, finger on the seven. And drop. We'll see how this uh, this goes. Never look at gift horse in the mouth. Then we'll uh, concentrate on the, the heavy cruiser here. We hit one of them. All right, so these guys find our friend the cruiser here. Like she's getting her damages uh, under control, which is not really what I want to see. All right, slow down. Now you can use different formations for uh, bombing runs like this so if I wanted to come on an angle perpendicular to the ship they could go in line abreast and they would all drop um, they would all drop their uh, bombs along the length of the ship but I've found that that is uh, not exactly efficient. Where's our other group? Number 10? Did they drop yet? Oh. Turn around. Alright. And I'm going to swing them out a little bit and then uh, bring them back in. She's running for the most part straight. Oh, not anymore. Let's start swinging in. Heavy and moderate, heavy, heavy, moderate, minor. She's turning to the right. Port side. Going 20 knots now. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim once again slightly ahead of bullseye here. To the left. Right there. These guys are going to get up. Find the altitude. I'll have them circle. Like that. Here go. That was a good one. Holy shit, look at that. One, two, three, four, five. I can't even keep track of them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Nine bombs. All right. Final group. Going way too fast, way too close. Going to have to come back around, target her again. Transport's looking a little worse for wear. Down to nine knots. I had to do some damage. Critical and moderate. 
All right, so hopefully this this run here will be the death shot, the kill shot, I guess you could say. All right, waiting for this to get as close as it's going to. I think we've about got it there. I'm going to come up roughly here and then turn in uh, down to nine knots. Tempting to split off one of our bombers, uh, send them for this transport out here, but now it's down to heavy. Come on now. Damage control teams can't be that effective or alive, if you think about it. Everything that just dropped on her. How many, uh, what do we have for uh, live crew? Left to fight. Fires and such. Alright, we're coming in. Turning slightly to port. Still only going nine knots. All right, we're a little bit off on this one, but still, all right, dropped. This is either gonna kill her or it's gonna do nothing. So let's, uh, whoops. Let's wait and see. All right. Critical and heavy probably won't sink. That one that's burning. Right there. Like she's getting her fires under control. I believe I didn't start more fires here. Right, our guys are kind of damaged, so thought about maybe going down and strafing, but I don't want to lose the Dauntlesses. They're going to end up getting away if that ship doesn't sink now, uh, just so we're clear on that. Um, but that is how you do manual bombing. Uh, I think I'm fairly decent at it. I'm not perfect. I don't always hit, as you just saw. But I got a lot of practice in Abicom, so uh, we'll st uh, stick around and see how this, uh, how the damages play out. They may spread, they may not, um, but our Wildcats, or our Dauntlesses are going to hang out in the area. And if you don't like seeing the air attacks, my apologies for the last 20 minutes. Probably won't do that very often, but I wanted to at least show that... Uh, the process I use in manual bombing. You know, I watched a lot of videos of War on the Sea when I was um, first starting playing, uh, and it did help. And if there's players out there that are just starting, just can't figure it out, then if that can help them out, help you guys out a little bit, I'm more than happy to spend a little bit of my series helping out. I will not do full tut tutorials because I don't feel I am... Uh, know that good that I can do tutorials so but that's how I do things and uh, as always we can hope for the best
Okay, so here we are back on the big map. Uh, I'm afraid this group is probably going to get away. Uh, we're not in that bad of shape on Guadalcanal. Uh, once, once this group gets in there and drops off their a whole lot of troops, we should be okay. Um, we've got places we can pull troops from uh, out in this area. I was probably going to do that at some point anyway, just to uh, pick our next target. We got a lot of troops on Port Moresby, but uh, we've also got this plane here, the Scout. Uh, so there's a good chance that this may be their next uh, focal point. I've taken Battle Group 1 and sent them over there. Uh, I'm getting cold feet about doing that. Just because... Um, if they keep sending stuff down this way, then they're going to be way out of position, which they seem to be every single time. They come over here, encounter something over here, and something pops up over here. Uh, Wasp Mess is uh, heading in that direction. I'm going to switch this up a little bit. <clears throat> or just have them patrol kind of right in this area. I know they're not in a position to do anything for anybody anywhere, uh, but... I'm going to set them to patrol right there. Uh, Truant, 8 torpedoes. Going to have to go back soon. Tautog, 24 torpedoes. We will send you... Actually, Tautog will take over for the Truant here. Truant will set course for... Uh, Savo Sound, start patrolling over here. And when she runs out of torpedoes, she can head back. Rusty is making her way there. And yes, we do have Task Force 18, which includes a couple of destroyers in Atlanta class for the anti aircraft fire, Yorktown and Enterprise. Both full up on planes, undamaged. Uh, there go. There one. I was going to hold them in position until we had a more robust escort. But they need to get down there ASAP. I may reorganize my uh, fleets once they get down there. Uh, Wasp is going to have to go back. Um, not sure exactly when we're going to get more command points. I'd have to actually do the math uh, for our next command point drop. Uh, also, we get back uh, Emerald Class Light Cruiser in a day. Seven for the Salt Lake City. And uh, 16 for the Northampton. 35 for Juno. So, we're going to get some ships in the next uh, week along with our command points. I need to get more heavy guns down there. I really do. So, that will be uh, kind of what I'm banking my command points for is a uh, fast battleship. This is from the Battle Group 1. Uh, we've got flights of torpedo bombers coming in. Here they are. Here's some of them. Here's the rest. I don't know where these... Uh, where my Wildcats are all going. I guess they're going after uh, one group of them. Oh, you just got two of them. Three of them. All three of them. Nice. These guys may not even make it to uh, our fleet. I'm okay with that. All right, there's one of the three. Let's start shooting, dude. Now we 
lost a wildcat out of that. Where are they? I don't see them. They're there. Two of them are getting through. Come on, wildcats. There's one. Come on now. We're gonna get a little nervous here. Come on, wildcats. There we go. All right. Woo! That really was kind of spooking me there. I think that's it for uh, that. Yeah. Good job, guys. I guess. Don't really need to give me a heart attack like that, but I'm grateful you're here. Transport 1 is at Guadalcanal. Uh, let's just... I guess I can just unload everything. Find it. Unload all cargo. There you go. Uh, make sure it's actually done. It hasn't... We'll drop off our engineers here as well. Whoops. All right. Uh, hmm. Have you joined uh, the counterpart down here for now? Right, let's see what that did to the uh, balance of power. That works all right here. Uh, 2,000 for a level two. There we go. Uh, we're shy on engineering and fuel for a level three. Just shy. So uh, fuel's heading back. Transport's heading. Uh, yeah, we're gonna send you back. I don't think I have anything for engineering up here. Oh, I do. All right. Well, you can go back. Then the other convoy. They're about the same, so. Uh, they'll get down there on load, and then I'm going to pull some troops off of uh, Port Moresby uh, to take our next base. Hopefully uh, Guadalcanal falls but in the meantime. we got this. Rusher, what'd you do? 1.30 in the morning. We got four and a half hours. Nope. Make that three and a half hours. Still air operations are available. Battle Group 1 is heading over there, as is the wasp nest, to uh, get it a little closer here. Yorktown and Lexington are both coming in. Um, this is just something we're going to have to take as it comes. I don't know where they came from, but Rusher didn't pick them up in the uh, slot, so up to uh, the ah woefully on underarmed truant to do whatever she can for this group here and then everybody else can join in once the sun comes up
All right, here's what we got going on. We got a Tayo. Tayo is our primary target. Those look like they're doing a little bit of zigging and zagging. Uh, Truant popped up right in front of the convoy. Uh, so I'm trying to get her around this way. This is a battle group. They've got a heavy cruiser, a light cruiser. They've got, I want to say, three transports uh, and a group of destroyers. But this is not a full-blown transport convoy like we have been seeing. They have a few transport ships, but there's some guns in this uh, outfit. I'm not sure Truant's going to be able to get around the end of this uh this convoy and swing back around in time to make her uh, her attack. Uh, if not, we could possibly target this guy. But I would like to take out the carrier um, just for the morning time when our uh, planes are going to come in. Um, Truant hopefully bought the group uh, bought us enough time to make it to 5 a.m. And um, I'm thinking Yorktown, Enterprise, and Wasp are all going to launch on her. Uh, launch on this group and hopefully do a good bit of damage and keep them off of Guadalcanal. Uh, but I don't want to risk planes unnecessarily if we can take out this carrier first. So that's the goal. Puts, uh, put six British non-dud torpedoes into this carrier. Alright, so I think this is about as good as it's going to get here. Just barely got around them. 43% on that Tayo up there. Got six on a three degree spread. We're at 2,900 yards. I can get this down to zero. Dropping pretty fast. Pretty slow though. All right, six torpedoes out. 46% solution isn't the best, but it is what we have to work with now. All right, there go our fish. All six are away. Go silent, drop the scope, dive. Dive down to 300 feet. Turn away, try and get out. So. There go the fish in front of them. I was a little worried about this destroyer out front because when we first came in, we were kind of running raid alongside them. I had to actually stop because I was afraid of uh, sonar going active, and that would have been just bad. These are actually looking fairly good. Uh, may have led her a little too much. But we'll see what happens with the uh, with the torpedo attack. It's actually looking f really, really good. We did get the notification, heard the horn, Tayo is sinking. That was a hell of a, hell of a hit there. Uh, got this destroyer that's coming out after us. So I don't think uh, Truant's gonna stick around for too long here. Have her set her course that way. 
kind of looks like they don't know where we are as of yet, and I'm not really willing to tempt fate with this. So, we're just going to make sure they don't know where we are, just to be fair. And then we're going to leave. Okay, that's uh, probably one of the best torpedo attacks I've ever performed. Truant did a hell of a job. All six torpedoes. I wasn't expecting all six to hit. I was expecting maybe three or four, but all six right into the uh, bow. And I would actually want to say maybe port quarter of uh, Tayo there, put her down. Uh, and we only got three command points, but it's a carrier that's on the bottom. Uh... And now our planes, when they go in, aren't going to have to worry about getting shot down. Uh, we're going to have to get a little closer than that for these guys to be effective. I think Dauntlesses, maybe Avengers will have the range, but um, we've still got an hour and a half until uh, air operations become available. Uh, Wasp's definitely, definitely going to be in range. Uh, 15 Wildcats, 21 Dauntlesses. Um, these two, maybe not so much. Uh, we'll finish off the attack in the next episode. Um, if you like this one, uh, hit the like button. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching a um, manual air attack. Uh, if you learn something, that's a good thing. Hope I could help some people out that may not be experienced in the game. Um, that was my goal in doing that. And uh, Truant just was kind of icing on the cake for that. Our sub attack went a lot better than the uh, air attack that I was using as a learning or a teaching experiment. So. Anyway, if you like the episode, hit the like button. If you have any tips or advice, Leave those in the comment section down below. If you want to follow along through our U.S. Navy Pacific campaign, hit the subscribe. Definitely wouldn't mind having you come along with us. Uh, it's been a pretty decent challenge so far. So come along for the ride. J76NY saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day.